What's up YouTube fragrance family and friends? Tommy with Studio Sense here with another video review. In fact, today is gonna to be a list video of 10 fragrances that I find so captivating and addictive that it's really hard to get my nose out of. I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. Have you ever walked up to your fragrance collection, whether it's two bottles, whether it's 200, and you just have in mind spraying on a fragrance and going, and you grab one, and you're like, maybe I should wear this today. And you put your nose to it, the sun goes up and goes down and comes up again, like a day has gone by and you've been smelling a fragrance. Like on YouTube, when you start out watching a how-to video and you end up on criminal psychology, listening to the confessions of a serial killer, that's what it's like when you grab a fragrance and you can't get your nose out of it because it's so addictive. So when we come back, we're gonna talk about 10 fragrances that I find are supremely addictive and that I often tend to overspray. That and more, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we're talking about 10 fragrances that I feel, at least for spring and summer, are supremely addictive or have addictive qualities about them that when you start smelling them, it's really hard to get your nose out of them. And let's face it, after 10, 15, 20 minutes, you don't really smell your fragrance anyway because it's mostly for other people to enjoy. So why not, when you're selecting your fragrance, to enjoy it for a few minutes? We do have 10 to talk about, so let's go ahead and dive right into our list. The very first fragrance is Blue de Chanel. If this is not the reigning king of blue fragrances, I don't know what is. It really is. Now this is the Eau de Parfum version. When I first smelled this fragrance, the Eau de Toilette was my preference, but now I'm growing to really enjoy the Eau de Parfum even better. There's just a richness about it, and when you put your nose to this, you smell that New Caledonian sandalwood. You know, it's got a, a rich tonka bean, it's got Haitian vetiver, you've got Sicilian lemon, some mandarin orange, all these wonderfully fragrant and aquatic notes. Once you smell it, you know you've got a high quality product on your hands. It's a little bit more, it's about, it's about 120, 130 bucks for a 100 ml bottle of the EDP, but it's definitely worth saving for. Blue de Chanel. Next up is a fragrance that gets a little bit of hate, but not a lot of love, but I find it supremely addictive, the note of absinthe. Absinthe is kind of like a mix of anisette, aniseed, which is very licorice-like, and a green, lightly boozy smell. And when you combine them, it's extremely addictive. Now the fragrance I'm referring to is, of course, Coach Blue. Coach Blue has this absinthe and lime note in the top. It's got a really nice ozonic and black pepper heart resting on that typical amber and cedar wood base. The biggest issue this fragrance faces and the reason it gets some criticism is the performance. It's got some weak performance, but it's a good four to five hour fragrance and sometimes that's all you want. Sometimes that's all you need. You really nailed the smell. It's just a shame it doesn't last longer. The price has come way down from since it was first released and it's very much worth owning. It's got that nice addictive quality and you don't have to worry about overspraying because it's not supremely heavy. That is Coach Blue. Now next is a fragrance you do have to be a little bit concerned about overspraying because it smells so good, so rich and dense. So you have to pull back on that desire to overspray Terra de Hermes Eau Tre Fraiche. Eau Tre Fraiche is such a wonderfully suede leather orange fragrance. So it's got that rich Terra de Hermes DNA, that really strong powerful heart punch of a geranium note, and then you've got some aquatic notes and woody notes in the base. This has got some really nice aquatic qualities about it. Such a high quality product. Similar to Blue de Chanel, this one will have you just like smelling it for days, and it does have some great performance. The addictive quality of Eau Fresh extends beyond just you, though. The people that are, that are gonna smell it on you are gonna be like, what are you wearing? That's a great smelling fragrance. It's happened to me before, it'll happen to you too. Terra de Hermes Eau Tres Fresh. If you're old enough, you remember when you would buy a record or a 45 or a CD, you know, not that long ago, and it would stay in your Walkman or it would stay in your CD player in your iPod and you would just play and play and play that song over the next month or so just because it was new in your collection before you would go back to some older stuff. It's like that with fragrances too and I find it very much like that with Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever. This fragrance, I have not had it that long and I've already used almost like an eighth of the fragrance itself. I mean, I do tend to overspray this, I fully admit it, but that's what addiction is all about, right? So I'm talking about fragrance addiction, the actual smell itself, not the purchasing addiction. That's not bottle addiction, that's something completely different. We'll talk about that on another video. This is fragrance addiction, which is relatively harmless. The the harm that can come from fragrance addiction is that people around you will be like, dude, you way oversprayed that fragrance. And you're like, I know. 
The great thing about Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever is that the opening, that uber realistic grapefruit note, it doesn't last forever. So the strength and the power that comes from that grapefruit note, you'll get it for about 30 minutes and then it dries down and becomes what it's meant to be with that combination of white musk and java vetiver and that mandarin orange overlay and grapefruit. It's a supremely fresh, aquatic, ozonic, summertime, springtime, summertime fragrance that has some extreme addictive qualities about it. And that's why I love it. Light Blue Forever by Dolce & Gabbana. Our next fragrance is from the house of Prada. It is Prada Lone Low. To me, this fragrance, very similar to its brother, Prada Lone, encompasses pretty much everything that you love about Prada fragrances. It's smooth, it's soapy, it's luxurious, it's powdery, it's got that nice iris. You've got red ginger, neroli, sandalwood, iris, vetiver, a very smooth, creamy, powdery, soapy, luxurious sense and sensation to wear. This one is perfect for any occasion, but and it's always one that I, I forget about. Just because I don't want to overuse this, it's one that I kind of set to the side and I'm like, okay, special occasion, this baby right here because I love it so much. But then I end up grabbing it and I smell it. And again, that day-night cycle happens and I'm like, oh crap, I gotta get going. So I just psh, 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 spray this on and I'm very happy that I did because this is perfect for all occasions all seasons but specifically spring and summer again encompasses everything that's great about prada as a design house prada loam low next up is a fragrance that i've never talked about on this channel before because it's relatively new to my collection and since i've gotten it I've really had trouble not wearing it every day so this bad boy here from the house of bentley it is bentley infinite rush the white edition the reason i really find myself smelling this more and more wanting to wear it more and more it's got such an addictive quality about it it's like a song that you hear just like music i talk about music being similar to fragrance that has a specific riff in it you know like whether it's a guitar riff or a specific piano riff the, the entire chorus of a song that you just want to hear over and over again because it pings the pleasure center of your brain. There's something about this fragrance that does that for me. And I feel like it's a combination of that Turkish rose, it's got basil and white thyme in the heart. And somehow that combination just smells like a very nice, elegant type of wood that you've never smelled before. And so you're experiencing for the first time. And because you're experiencing it for the first time, you just want to smell it over and over again. You want to outwear it, overwear it, and overspray it. Along with those notes, you've got white musk, you've got cashmere wood and sandalwood in the base, and it opens with a nice Italian mandarin orange and provincial lavender. So it's a supremely elegant, rich, luxurious smelling. You notice a lot of these fragrances have those in things in common. This is definitely that. If you've not smelled this before or tried it out, Bentley Infinite Rush White Edition will become part of your rotation for spring and summer. Next up is a brand new scent for 2021 from Zadig and Voltaire or Zadig Voltaire. And it is one of those that you just, I can't not overspray this. Um, I absolutely love the This Is Him fragrance DNA and they carry that in This Is Love, except This Is Love is the summertime edition of This Is Him. This Is Him is a cool weather, you know, fall to end of winter kind of fragrance, but it feels like cheating. That's why I like this so much. And that's why it has to me that addictive quality because it feels like you're getting away with something you otherwise couldn't. And that is wearing a wintertime fragrance in summertime because it still contains those constituents and qualities that I love about This Is Him, only it's a summertime fragrance. What I'm talking about is primarily that marriage of orange blossom and sandalwood. It's so fresh and there's a nice bergamot as well in the open. It opens so fresh and citrusy and then goes into this sandalwood and it's just creamy and milky. It's almost like a combination of a cream sickle and an almond sickle, if there is such a thing, there should be. That combination is what makes this just really hard to stop smelling and to stop spraying. And this is another one though, that even though you overspray it, it's not gonna really bother anybody because it doesn't have any like latent, sharp, punch in the face qualities. It's not a supremely heavy fragrance, so you don't have to worry about overspraying it too much. Finally, your addiction can find a home in Zadig and Voltaire's This Is Love. If you were to ask a room full of 200 guys, that, you know, who out here doesn't love the Angel for Men DNA? There might be a few outliers that'll raise their hands just to be rebellious or whatever. Most dudes really love that DNA, but it's a wintertime fragrance. It's not something you want to necessarily wear in summertime. You can, you can, 
but it's pretty much for cold weather. Well, the good news is that Mugler made, a, in my estimation, a spring and summer version of Angel for Men, and it is Angel Ultimate, or Amen Ultimate. What makes this so alluring and magnetic that you can wear it equally, though, in cooler weather as you can in spring and summer, is that cappuccino note. You put that cappuccino note along with that fir balsam, along with that cedar, along with that bergamot, which is in the open, and you have a fragrance that your nose just goes straight to and straight for. It's dark, it's rich, and yet it really has this light, aerated feel about it. It's uplifting. Honestly, that's why they call it ultimate. It's kind of a good lead man and representative of all that's great about Mugler, especially the, the Amen line. Plus, it really has great performance. To me, I get a good eight hours out of this. I often forget that it's over there in the corner. It's one of those, again, that I'm like, I'm on a special occasion, this guy. This one can be a little bit heavy, so you gotta be careful about overspraying this because you will choke some people out, but what a way to asphyxiate, what a way to die, what a way to go. Angel for Men Ultimate. This next addictive fragrance that I can't get enough of, and I definitely overspray this one, but again, it's not supremely heavy, is from Jean-Paul Gaultier, the Lamal line of fragrances, and it is a new fragrance for this year, Lamal On Board. On Board is such a, a light version of Lamal that doesn't over lavender, you know, and it doesn't over sweet too much that I feel like it's the better side of Lamal. I will say Ultramal is also ridiculously addictive, but this one for spring and summer, I feel is a great version to not have to worry about overspraying. You don't have to worry about overdoing it with this guy. It's got a really nice, fresh, always there kind of fragrance DNA and profile, scent profile, without being heavy handed without being too much. Again, it's one of those four scent fragrances with bergamot, tonka bean, geranium, and amber basically comprise the entire formula of this. Some few other notes in there as well. And if you haven't tried it out, if you've not really been a fan of Lamal in the past, give On Board a try. Guarantee you'll probably really like it. It's a great little spring and summer fragrance. Last up in my list of 10 fragrances that I find supremely addictive and often overspray is an Yves Saint Laurent fragrance in the Le Nuit de Lome line. It is Le Nuit de Lome Blue Electrique. Blue Electrique is new for 2021. You probably can't see. I've used, again, about an eighth of this fragrance. My wife often questions why I wear fragrances to bed. And I'm like, I wanna smell good. What a great way to get a complaint is to wear something that smells this good. It's extremely powerful. It will get you recognition, but you do have to be careful about overspraying. Three or four sprays are really all you need on your neck, on your arms, your pulse points. People are gonna smell it. People are gonna appreciate it. You're gonna get compliments on this. The combination of French lavender, geranium, cardamom, and ginger, Primarily, this is a cardamom-based fragrance. It smells just like Le Nuit de Lome, only the blue version of Le Nuit de Lome. It's the best way to describe this. And if you like Le Nuit de Lome, you will love this fragrance. So addictive, so addictive. Guys, that's a wrap of my 10 fragrances that I find supremely addictive and I end up over spraying. I know that you have a list of your own out there, so I really wanna hear what you feel. It takes a while to get your nose away from or you find yourself getting distracted by because it just smells so good. Let me know what your list is. Let me know some fragrances that you find are supremely addictive. Really appreciate you guys taking your time out of your day, stopping by and checking out my video. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.